Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, also known as KP, is one of the four provinces of Pakistan, located in the northwestern region of the country. It was formerly known as Northwest Frontier Province, commonly called Sarhadin Urdu, which means frontier. Its provincial capital and largest city is Peshawar, followed by Mardin. It shares borders with the federally administered tribal areas to the west, Gilgit Baltistan to the northeast, Azad Kashmir, Islamabad and Punjab to the east and southeast. Balochistan lies to the southeast. Khyber Pakhtunkhwa also shares an international border with the Afghanistan, connected through the Khyber Pass. It is also the site of the ancient kingdom Gandhara, the ruins of its capital, Pushkalavati, and the most prominent center of learning in the Peshawar Valley, Taktai Bahi. It has been under the suzerainty of the Persians, Greeks, Mauryans, Kushans, Shahis, Ghaznavids, Mughals, Sikhs, and British Empire throughout its long history. Khyber Pakhtunkhwa is the third largest province of Pakistan by the size of both population and economy though it is geographically small. It comprises 10.5% of Pakistan's economy, and is home to 11.9% of Pakistan's total population, with the majority of the province's inhabitants being Pashtuns, Hazriwal, Chitralite, and Kohistani. Since the 9-11 attacks in the United States in 2001, the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa is a major theater of militancy and terrorism which intensified when the Taliban began an unsuccessful attempt to seize the control of the province in 2004. With the launch of Zabia ZB against the Taliban insurgency, the casualty and crime rates in the country as a whole dropped by 40.0% as compared to 2011-13, with even greater drops noted in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. Despite the province capital being the site of a massacre of schoolchildren by terrorists on 16 December 2014, history Early history The ancient Aryan migration is believed to have taken place at approximately 2000 CE, when semi-nomadic peoples entered the Gangetic Plains of India after having passed modern Khyber Pakhtunkhwa's Khyber Pass. The Indo-Greek Gandharan civilization, which reached its zenith between the 6th and 1st centuries BCE, and which features prominently in the Hindu epic poem, the Mahabharata, had one of its cores over the modern Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province. At around 516 BCE, Darius Histaspes sent Salax, a Greek seaman from Kyinda, to explore the course of the Indus River. Darius Histaspes subsequently subdued the races dwelling west of the Indus and north of Kabul. Gandhara was incorporated into the Persian Empire as one of its Far East and most satrapi system of government. The satrapi of Gandhara is recorded to have sent troops for Xerxes' invasion of Greece in 480 BCE. In the spring of 327 BCE Alexander the Great crossed the Indian Caucasus and advanced to Nicaea, where Omphis, king of Taxila and other chiefs joined him. Alexander then dispatched part of his force through the valley of the Kabul River. While he himself advanced into modern Khyber Pakhtunkhwa's Bajra and Swat regions with his troops, having defeated the Aspasians, from whom he took 40,000 prisoners and 230,000 oxen, Alexander crossed the Gurayos and entered into the territory of the Asakanoi, also in modern-day Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. Alexander then made Mbolima his base. The ancient region of Pokaleotis northwest of Peshawar submitted to the Greek invasion, leading to Nicanor. Disambiguation needed, a Macedonian, being appointed satrap of the country west of the Indus which includes the modern Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province. After Alexander's death in 323 BCE Porus obtained possession of the region, but was murdered by Eudemus in 317 BCE. Eudemus then left the region, and with his departure Macedonian power collapsed. Sandrocotus, the founder of the Maurian dynasty, then declared himself master of the province. 
His grandson, Ashoka, made Buddhism the dominant religion in ancient Gandhara. After Ashoka's death the Mauryan Empire collapsed, just as in the west the Seleucid power was rising. The Greek princes of neighboring Bactria took advantage of the power vacuum to declare their independence. The Bactrian kingdoms were then attacked from the west by the Parthians and from the north by the Sarkas, a Central Asian tribe. Local Greek rulers still exercised a feeble and precarious power along the borderland, but the last vestige of Greek dominion was extinguished by the arrival of the Uakai. The Uakai were a race of nomads that were themselves forced southwards out of Central Asia by the nomadic Zhongyu people. The Kushan clan of the Ukai seized vast swathes of territory under the rule of Kujula Kadphises. His successors, Vima Takta and Vima Kadphises, conquered the northwestern portion of the Indian subcontinent. Vima Kadphises was then succeeded by his son, the legendary king Kanishka, who himself was succeeded by Havishka and Vasudeva I, under the reign of Vasudeva, who abandoned Buddhism in favor of Hinduism. The dominions of the Kushan Empire shrank to an area roughly approximating the boundaries of modern Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. Common era during the early 1st millennium CE, prior to Muslim conquests, the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa region was ruled by the Shai dynasty. The early Shai kings were Buddhist, like their Kushan predecessors prior to the reign of Vasudeva. The later Shai kings of Kabul and Gandhara were Hindu, and had strong ties to ruling dynasties in neighboring regions of modern Kashmir and Punjab. The Hindu Shahis are believed to have been a ruling elite of a predominantly Buddhist. Hindu and shamanistic population and were thus patrons of numerous faiths. Various artifacts and coins from their rule have been found that show evidence of their multicultural domain. By the time the Chinese monk Shanzang visited the region early in the 7th century, the region was ruled by affiliates of the Shai kings but was no longer under direct rule of the Shahis, whose efforts were focused on regions to the east of modern Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. Shahi suzerainty continued in the region until 870 CE when local noblemen began to carve out their own fiefdoms largely independent of Shahi control, but nominally subservient to the Shahi dynasty. The remnants of Shai rule were wiped out by Mahmud of Ghazni after the defeat of Jayapala at the Battle of Peshawar on November 27, 1001. Muslim rule When Ghazni arrived in the region, Hinduism, Zoroastrianism, Buddhism and Shamanism were the prominent religions. Local Pashtun and Dardic tribes converted to Islam, while retaining some local traditions such as Pashtun Wali or the Pashtun Code of Honor. Vestiges of shamanism are still to be found in the Chitral Valley, where the Kalash people still practice their pre-Islamic faith. Between 963 and 1187 CE, the area of modern Khyber Pakhtunkhwa became part of larger Islamic empires, including the Ghaznavid Empire, headed by Sultan Mahmud of Ghazni, and the empire of Muhammad Shahabuddin Ghari. The Ghaznavid domain included large swathes of modern Afghanistan, Pakistan, and India. It was ruled from its capital at Lahore from 1151 to 1186. Following the collapse of Ghaznavid rule, local Pashtuns of the Delhi Sultanate controlled the region. Several Turkic and Pashtun dynasties ruled from Delhi, having shifted their capital from Lahore to Delhi. Several Muslim dynasties ruled modern Khyber Pakhtunkhwa during the Delhi Sultanate period. The Mamluk dynasty, the Khilji dynasty, the Tuflak dynasty, the Sayyid dynasty, and the Lodi dynasty. Mughal suzerainty over the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa region was partially established after Babar, the founder of the Mughal Empire, invaded the region in 1505 CE via the Khyber Pass. He was forced to retreat westwards to Kabul, but returned to defeat Ibrahim Lodi, the last Lodi king. In 1525 CE the local Pashtun tribesmen quickly pledged loyalty to the Mughal Empire, and largely remained under nominal Mughal rule until the arrival of the Sikhs in the 19th century.
Under the reign of Baba's son, Humayun, direct Mughal rule was briefly challenged with the rise of the Pashtun king, Sher Shah Suri, who began construction of the famous Grand Trunk Road, which links Kabul, Afghanistan with Chittagong, Bangladesh over 2,000 miles to the east. Later, local rulers once again pledged loyalty to the Mughal emperor. Mughal rule over the region was again interrupted by the invasion of Persia's Nadir Shah, who in 1739 sacked the Mughal capital at Delhi with the help of Pashtuns from the modern Khyber Pakhtunkhwa region. The area fell subsequently under the rule of Afghans under the Durrani Empire. Muslim rule was interrupted by a brief invasion of the Hindu Marathas who established a tenuous rule over the region from 1758 following the 1758 Battle of Peshawar. Durrani rule was re-established 11 months later in 1759, and lasted until 1818 when the Sikhs invaded the region under the command of Maharaja Ranjit Singh. Sikh rule Sikhs continued to rule the region for several decades. Sikh rule came to an end after the British East India Company defeated the Sikhs during the Second Anglo-Sikh War in 1849. British Raj British East India Company defeated the Sikhs during the Second Anglo-Sikh War in 1849, and incorporated small parts of the region into the province of Punjab, while Peshawar was the site of a small mutiny against British during the Indian Rebellion of 1857. Local Pashtun tribes throughout the region generally remained neutral and supportive of the British as they detested the Sikhs. In contrast to the rest of British India which rose up in revolt against the British, however, British control of parts of the region was routinely challenged by Wazir tribesmen in Waziristan and other Pashtun tribes, who resisted any foreign occupation until the British granted Pakistan its independence. By the late 19th century, the official boundaries of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa region still had not been defined as the region was still claimed by the Kingdom of Afghanistan. It was only in 1893 the British demarcated the boundary with Afghanistan under a treaty agreed to by the Afghan king, Abdul Rahman Khan. Following the Second Anglo-Afghan War, several princely states within the boundaries of the region were allowed to maintain their autonomy under the terms of maintaining friendly ties with the British. As the British war effort during World War I demanded the reallocation of resources from British India to the European war fronts, some tribesmen from Afghanistan crossed the Durand Line in 1917 to attack British posts in an attempt to gain territory and weaken the legitimacy of the border. The validity of the Durand Line, however, was reaffirmed in 1919 by the Afghan government with the signing of the Treaty of Rawalpindi which ended the Third Anglo-Afghan War, a war in which Waziri tribesmen allied themselves with the forces of Afghanistan's King Amanullah in their resistance to British rule. The Wazirs and other tribes, taking advantage of instability on the frontier, continued to resist British occupation until 1920 even after Afghanistan had signed a peace treaty with the British. British campaigns to subdue tribesmen along the Durand Line, as well as three Anglo-Afghan wars, made travel between Afghanistan and the densely populated heartlands of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa increasingly difficult. The two regions were largely isolated from one another from the start of the Second Anglo-Afghan War in 1878 until the start of World War II in 1939, when conflict along the Afghan frontier largely dissipated. Concurrently, the British continued their large public works projects in the region and extended the Great Indian Peninsula Railway into the region, which connected the modern Khyber Pakhtunkhwa region to the plains of India to the east. Other projects, such as the Attic Bridge, Islamia College University, Khyber Railway, and establishment of cantonments in Peshawar, Kohat, Mardin, and now share a further cemented British rule in the region. In 1901, the British carved out the northwest portions of Punjab to create the Northwest Frontier Province, which was renamed Khyber Pakhtunkhwa in 2010. 
disassociation from Afghanistan, and increased connectivity to Punjab and the Gangetic Plains beyond Punjab, had a profound effect on Pashtun tribes living on the British side of the Durand Line, with few exception of the tribesmen living close to the border with Afghanistan. The vast majority of Pashtuns and the British-held areas increasingly viewed themselves as Indians, and found it easier to travel to Lahore and Delhi than to Kabul or Kandahar. Large numbers of Pashtuns also enlisted in the British Indian Army, and were stationed throughout British-held territories in India and educated in the British Indian system, both of which helped to further reorient the local population eastwards towards the heartlands of India. The in-migration of Hindu and Sikh traders to the NWFP from India also strengthened cultural reorientation towards British India. This dramatic shift in self-identification is epitomized the Kudai Kidmatgar movement of the popular Pashtun nationalist Abdul Ghaffar Khan, who non-violently campaigned for the independence of a united India and not for joining Afghanistan. Further, no prominent leaders amongst the Pashtuns campaigned for unification with Afghanistan during the period preceding independence. The NWFP was granted limited home rule by the British in 1937. Beginning in 1940, support for the Pakistan movement, which sought the establishment of an Indian Muslim homeland, increased in the NWFP. Immediately prior to Pakistani independence from Britain in 1947, the British held a referendum in the NWFP to allow voters to choose between joining. Pakistan or India. The referendum was held on 2 July 1947 while polling began on 6 July 1947 and the referendum results were made public on 20 July 1947. According to the official results, there were 572,798 registered voters out of which 289,244 votes were cast in favor of Pakistan while only 2,874 were cast in favor of India. According to an estimate total turnout for referendum was only 15% less as compared to that of 1946 elections. Although large number of Kudai Kidmatgar supporters boycotted the referendum, and intimidation against Hindu and Sikh voters by supporters of the Pakistan movement was also reported. Abdul Ghaffar Khan pledged allegiance to the new state of Pakistan in 1947, and thereafter abandoned his goal of a united India in favor of supporting increased autonomy for the NWFP under Pakistani rule. He was subsequently arrested several times for his opposition to strong centralized rule, as the region came under British control, as had been agreed to by the Afghan government following the British victory over Afghanistan in the Second Anglo-Afghan War and after the treaty ending Third Anglo-Afghan War. No option was available to cede the territory to the rule of the Afghan king even though Afghanistan continued to claim the entire region as it was part of the Durrani Empire prior to the conquest of the region by the Sikhs in 1818. By 1947 Pashtun nationalists were advocating for a united India, and no prominent voices advocated for a union with Afghanistan. Also in line with similar votes held throughout the British-controlled territories in India, no option was accommodated for independence. However, all the princely states within the boundaries of the NWFP were allowed to maintain certain autonomy. But in 1970s most of the princely states were merged completely into Pakistan. After Pakistani independence After the independence of Pakistan in 1947, Afghanistan was the sole member of the United Nations to vote against Pakistan's accession to the UN because of Kabul's claim to the Pashtun territories on the Pakistani side of the Durand Line. Afghanistan's lawyer Jigar of 1949 declared the Durand Line invalid, which led to border tensions with Pakistan, and decades of mistrust between the two states. Afghan governments have also periodically refused to recognize Pakistan's inheritance of British treaties regarding the region. 
During the 1950s, Afghanistan supported the secessionist Pashtunistan movement, although it failed to gain substantial support amongst the population of the northwest frontier province. During the Soviet occupation of Afghanistan, the NWFP served as a major supply base for the Afghan Mujahideen who fought the Soviet Union during the 1980s. As a result of the Soviet invasion, over 5 million Afghan refugees poured into Pakistan, mostly choosing to reside in the NWFP. The province remained heavily influenced by events in Afghanistan thereafter. The 1989-1992 civil war in Afghanistan following the withdrawal of Soviet forces led to the rise of the Afghan Taliban, which had emerged in the border region between Afghanistan, Balochistan, and Fata as a formidable political force. In 2010 the province was renamed Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. Protests arose among the local Hind Khwan, Chitralai, Kohistani and Kalash populations over the name change as they began to demand their own provinces. Seven people were killed and 100 injured in protests on the 11th of April 2011. The Awami National Party sought to rename the province Pakhtunkhwa, which translates to Land of Pashtuns in the Pashto language. The name change was largely opposed by non-Pashtuns and by political parties such as the Pakistan Muslim League N, who draw much of their support from non-Pashtun regions of the province, and by the Islamist Mutahida Majlis Imal coalition. War and militancy Khyber Pakhtunkhwa has been a site of militancy and terrorism that started after the attacks of September 11, 2001, and intensified when the Pakistani Taliban began an attempt to seize power in Pakistan starting in 2004. Armed conflict began in 2004, when tensions rooted in the Pakistan Army's search for al-Qaeda fighters in Pakistan's mountainous Waziristan area, escalated into armed resistance. Fighting is ongoing between the Pakistani Army and armed militant groups such as the Tariq i Taliban Pakistan, Jundala, Lashkar e Islam, Tariq e Nafaz e Shariat e Muhammadi, Al Qaeda, and elements of organized crime have led to the deaths of over 50,000 Pakistanis since the country joined the US led war on terror, with Khyber Pakhtunkhwa being the site of most of the conflict. Khyber Pakhtunkhwa is also the main theatre for Pakistan's Zabi AZB operation, a broad military campaign against militants located in the province and neighbouring FATA. By 2014, casualty rates in the country as a whole dropped by 40% as compared to 2011 to 2013, with even greater drops noted in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. Despite the province being the site of a large massacre of schoolchildren by terrorists in December 2014, 